welcome to Kenya, where they are known for their safaris as well as all of their delicious tropical fruits. So let's look at some of the products that are native to Kenya and also Africa. So you have rice, they have lots of rice, as well as honeydew melons, they have cantaloupe, and they also have good, delicious watermelon, and they also have fish as well. So that's just some of the products that we will be looking at as we travel to Kenya today. So let's also look and see where exactly Kenya is at. Here we are in the United States, and we're going all the way across the ocean to the continent of Africa to Kenya, right here on the equator. Right, so we are traveling a long ways today. So what will we be doing today, do you think? I don't know. What are we doing today, Miss <laughs> Beverly? <laughs> we're going to be looking at a book called Head to Surprise. We're also going to be making a delicious watermelon shake. And we're also going to have a special guest today, and this is Pam Ooten, who's our Family and Consumer Science Agent, and she will be dehydrating apples. We're also going to look at and learn about an ancient art project. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the book, Handa's Surprise. Handa put six fruits in a basket for her friend, Akio. She will be surprised, thought Handa, as she set out for Akio's village. I wonder which fruits she'll like best from the basket she's walking towards the village with. Will Akia like the soft yellow banana? Uh-oh, look at the monkey in the tree. He's gonna get the banana. Hamda walks on. She doesn't realize the monkey got the banana out of her basket. Will, will uh, Akia like the round, juicy orange, thought Hamda. Oh, here comes the giraffe. He's got the orange. Handa doesn't realize it's out of her basket. Or will Akia like the red, ripe mango, thought Handa. Here comes the elephant. Oh, the elephant's got the mango. Will Akia like the spiky leaved pineapple, Handa thought. Oh, here comes the giraffe. He's got the pineapple out of the basket. Will Akia like the creamy green avocado? Uh-oh, here comes the antelope. He's getting the avocado. Or will Akia like the purple passion fruit, Handa thought. Oh goodness, in the tree, there's the parrot. And he got the last fruit, the passion fruit. But look there and here in the story. The goat has broken loose from its hole and it's running towards the tree and crashes into the tangerine tree. Now I wonder which fruit Akia will like best, thought Handa, not realizing her, she has new fruit. Hello, Akia, said Handa, I brought you a surprise. Tangerine, said Akia, my favorite fruit. Tangerine, said Handa, that is a surprise. What a cool story. Let's make a delicious watermelon shake, and it comes from the 4-H curriculum, Food, Culture, and Reading. Our ingredients will be six ice cubes, two cups of chopped watermelon, and this watermelon looks delicious. And then also, a tablespoon of honey. And once you have all of these ingredients in, we are going to put the lid on and we are going to blend our ingredients. Wow, this looks delicious. Let me pour a cup of our watermelon shake. 
Let's try this. Oh, that is good. Join me for some watermelon shake. Dehydrating apples is really easy. And the whole purpose of dehydrating apples is to remove the water from the fruit, be it the apples, the peaches, the pears, so you can enjoy it later on. The steps are really easy. First, wash your fruit or vegetables really well. Let them drain. You wanna get rid of that excess water. After the apples or fruit have drained, you're ready to peel it, and you'll need some adult help with this. And after peeling the apples, you'll want to slice them to be about one fourth inch thick. As you slice them, put them in a mixture of acid water. This is one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice mixed with a quart of water. This keeps the apples or the other fruit pieces from turning dark and the product will be much prettier. After you've let the apples soak for a few minutes, drain the apple slices in a colander. This is a step you don't want to miss. You want to get rid of that excess water. After draining, you're ready to come to your uh, cooking rack, which has been placed inside of a cooking sheet. And you want to place your apples around the cookie sheet and you're going to place them so air is circulating. We'll now go to the oven that's been preheated between 145 and 175 degrees. We'll slip the cooling rack in and let the dehydrating begin. It's ideal if you can put a wooden spoon in the door of your oven at the upper part of your oven to keep the air circulating. I can't do that in my oven, so I just occasionally open the oven door and move the apples around on the cookie sheet and kind of make sure that air is being distributed. Remember, they're going to dehydrate about five and a half to 11 hours. Let them cool and then you can test them. If they're crunchy and not mushy, you know they've dehydrated. The next step is super important. We're going to condition our apple slices. These are the cooled apples. We'll place them in a container and leave it about halfway full. We'll put a lid on it and every day for the next week, shake these apples a couple of times a day. This is completing the conditioning process. When you open the container, if there's no moisture around the edges, you'll know the apples are conditioned and ready to be placed in their permanent jar. Or you could use a plastic container, but I'm using a small canning jar. You can fill it to the top now, and after they're filled to the top, just put your um, lid and ring on and screw it down tightly. Don't these apples look delicious? It's simple and easy to dehydrate apples and other fruit with these seven easy steps. Hope you enjoy. Let's take a look at a really neat craft that we can do at home uh, that's really based on an ancient um, craft of batiking. Uh, very similar to this, but more of an updated version. So some things you're gonna need is some thin fabric, something that you can see a little bit through. You're gonna need some gel glue. You're gonna need a pattern. And you're gonna need some multicolored uh, acrylic paints. So to get started, um, you wanna take your pattern, and I wanna talk, tell you what this pattern is because this is unique to Africa. In Africa, they speak about 60 different languages across the continent. So many times they use symbols as a form of communication. This particular symbol means spider web. Uh, it also means um, wisdom and creativity. But the spider web is also a symbol for many of their African folk tales. And some of you may remember the folk tales of a Nazi the spider. And this is the symbol for a Nazi the spider. So we're gonna take this pattern and lay it underneath our fabric And we're going to use the gel glue 
to trace around. And as you can see, we can see the pattern underneath our, our fabric. And we're gonna trace the pattern with the glue. Once you have your gel glue on the cloth and traced your pattern, you'll want to let this dry for about 12 hours or overnight. Um, so let it sit and uh, let it dry until we begin our next process. All right, our glue is all nice and dry on our fabric. And we're gonna put this on a, a surface that's not gonna mess up mom's counters. And we have taken just uh, about a fourth of a cup of water and maybe a quarter, um, little quarter size dollop of acrylic paints uh, and mix them together to make a really thin paint. You want several different colors to color your fabric with. So let's get started on our paints. Once we've got the entire fabric covered, we're going to let this dry completely. For the next part of the process, you're going to need a bowl of hot water. We're going to take the design that is, that is already dried, that we've colored and still has the gel glue on it. We're going to take this and put it in the hot water and just get it nice and wet. And you might even take a soft brush to the glue but the water will dissolve the uh, glue gel. I can feel it dissolving in my fingers now. It gets really loose and eventually it will come off. So this is what it will look like once the glue is removed and it's your finished product. Isn't that pretty? It has been an exciting trip to Kenya today. What's some of the things that we accomplished today, Miss Denise? We read this really cool book about Handa's Surprise. We also made a delicious watermelon shake, and Pam helped us dry apples, and we learned how to make this neat African craft. We have had a wonderful time, and glad that you could join us today. See you next time.